This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. We're going to continue our Lenten practice of dwelling in the Word together today. And so I'm going to read the Gospel text one more time in just a minute. And this time through, I want you to listen closely to trust that the Holy Spirit speaks to us through God's Word in Scripture. And notice what word or phrase stands out to you. And then after a few moments and after we've read it again going to invite you to turn to a couple of neighbors and share with one another. Everybody will get about a minute to share what word or phrase jumped out at you and why. So listen again to this reading from Luke chapter 13 verses 1 through 9. At that very time, There were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish, just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years, Years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Again, think of a word or phrase that stands out to you, and then I invite you to turn uh, to a neighbor, maybe to a couple neighbors, groups of about three or four, um, as you can, and we're going to take about five minutes, so about one minute per person, if you're in a group of four, to share what you heard in the scripture reading. Let's go for it. Okay, I invite you to find a seat, and we'll come back together as a group, and, uh, and like we've started the last couple weeks, well, so one, a reminder, uh, this is a practice that 
many groups in our congregation have been doing for a while, and especially our strategic planning team has been meeting at least monthly to dwell in God's word together so that we might hear who God is calling us to be and become in this season. And, uh, and so we're sharing that together now. So we want to hear from you. And I also want to hear what you heard. So by way of starting, I invite you to share uh, something you heard one of your conversation partners say stood out to them. What did you hear? Yeah. Sin. Yeah, yeah. There's th some of our lang our you know our very real language of cultivating in this one, right? Like the the plant, like you know the digging and the putting fertilizer and manure. Phyllis, you were. What did you hear? Right. Our our sense of call and vocation and and what we have changes throughout our life. And so we we listen again. That's true of us as people. It's also one of those things that's true of us as a church. Right. As we come back together, we're we're not who we once were. Right. And, and the things that we have to offer today may not be the same things that we had to offer a few years ago. And, and as we age and the change that comes with age, some of the stuff we once did isn't what we're being called or what we're able, even if we feel called, to do in the same way. And so we, we listen again and, and learn. What else, what else did you hear a conversation partner lift up from this text today? Yeah. Yeah, right? We can focus on that, that word manure, right? It's, it's smelly. It's kind of a gross thing, but it has some benefits to it nonetheless, right? It's, it fertilizes. It helps part of that cultivating process. So I wonder what parts of cultivating our faith might be a little smelly when we get started, right? Or might surprise us. We might first look at them and think, you know, I, I think of things like manure, and I'm like, who first thought of like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm going to use for fertilizer, Right? But, but then we learned a, more, a little more about it and discovered what, it, what gifts were hidden there. Sure. Garbage out of the closet. Right. Yeah, exactly. What else? What else? Um, I'll, I'll open it up. It, what it, you, know, you can share what you heard a conversation partner say or what you heard. What else did you hear in the scripture today? What did you share? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a little transition. Sure, right? Yeah, there's, you know, he tells the gardener, we got to cut it down, cut it down. And the gardener's like, no, let me tend to it. And if in a year, you can cut it down. There's almost like, inter there's an intercession on behalf of the tree, right? And then there's also, yeah, a shift of, of who does what. Yeah. Yeah, what's what's the gardener feeling and how's that going? Because, you know, if he intercedes and it's like, let me let me tend to it, right? It's like, well, was he not tending to it in the three previous years? Or not as well as he should have, or how is he feeling about the work he's done to it or his capacity to help it bear fruit? We got time for maybe one more. Yeah. And about how a lot of times a lot of people are doing the same thing that may be wrong, but then when they see get when the faith pulls over or gets lost, but it doesn't mean that their work or anything really you know, in terms of what happens is true sure. to them. But sure. Yeah. 
yeah, we, we can associate like reason to, um, to things that, that we're not always putting the right sort of reason or causation to. So you, as you share, right, sometimes, sometimes everybody's speeding, but only one car gets pulled over, right? And it doesn't mean that like they were, even that they were a worse driver than all the other cars, right? Um, it just means that it, that it happened to them um, and that it got pointed out. And so, yeah, there's that question, right, of like, are, you know, Jesus is asking, do you think that these people who this thing happened to, it happened to them because they are worse or doing worse things than everybody else? Um, and, and maybe calls that thinking into question. Absolutely. Well, as we think about letting go and cultivating, um, the, this Lenten theme, a lot of it comes from this text, right? As you picked up really quickly, that parable of the fig tree. Right? And, and how, do, how are we being called to cultivate and tend to something? How do we take a closer look and realize the things that have not been bearing fruit? And maybe it was, a, you know, like I, I think about, we talked about the gardener. I think about the tree. You know, and, and maybe that was where part of the, the changing as we age, right? Maybe, one, maybe at one point this was the best tree around, right? Bearing the most fruit. And now it's changed. When I think of like programs that we have or ways that we act and, and engage the world as a church that maybe once upon a time bore so much fruit, but we've kept doing them because the tree's always been there, even though it hasn't borne fruit in a while. Or something that hasn't borne fruit because we didn't tend it as we should have. That it still has gifts to give and fruit to bear, but we didn't tend to it. And that's, that's this season that we're in. That's the season of Lent. We do that work in our own lives, and we also go about that work as a church, together. You know, the, the, there's a lot of metaphors or parables that a lot of pastors have been telling about what this pandemic has done to the church, to congregations, but to the church at large. And it's like, if there were cracks in the dam, right, they burst through. If there were things that we had kind of painted over, if there was garbage in the closet, we had enough time at home to find it. Right? Um, and in the same way, it's sort of revealing the truth of what's bearing fruit and, and what is not. And so we're entering into that space as we do this planning and discernment, as we listen to God in scripture, as we listen to God through conversation together, and as we'll listen to God and what God is up to in the community. Uh, before I sort of wrap up with a bit more on letting go and cultivating and on this parable of a fig tree, uh, I do want to acknowledge kind of that first part of our text, right? Um, because sometimes bad stuff happens and people die horrible deaths. Sometimes war comes not because somebody deserved it, right? Sometimes a pandemic hits certain parts of the globe harder than others, not because of some latent sin, but because that's how viruses spread. Sometimes we're really good at wanting to sit with the question why for so long that we forget to renounce the evil. Why did this evil thing happen? Why, 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 why? When our call as people of faith is to renounce evil and to practice love. So Jesus says, hey, you too need to repent. Because after all, we are all one. Turn toward God's ways and away from your own. So that when suffering and pain happen, sure, we might ask why, and we might, along with the psalmist, cry out and lament, whether it's about war or a local shooting or another public shooting car show last night? What did they do? Were they worse sinners? 
We can sit there and we can lament. In fact, it's healthy. I think it's part of it. We ought to lament and cry out like we do in our Kyrie, right? Have, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And then we summon that courage that God is cultivating in us to renounce the forces at work that oppose God and to work for the abundant life of all people here and now. Sometimes we get lost in the questions. I love questions, right? I'm telling us to do questions. We're listening right now, right? I love questions, but sometimes we can get lost in the questions just like we get lost in other things. And so we cultivate our courage to act and to move to trust that as we take that step, God will make clear the next one for us, even if the end isn't there yet. That's this work of strategic planning too, friends, right? We're, we're looking for, for our next right steps, hoping that the fullness of the path comes into greater clarity. And we know that there's stuff that we need to let go of. We might need to let go of a focus on shame and guilt, we talked about this when we talked about forgiveness a few weeks ago, right? Like there's, the, there's the, the shame or the hurt that comes with the thing, but then there's like the guilt for like I can't forgive yet, right? Like why is this keeping me up at night? I need to let go of that shame and guilt and instead cultivate the courage to explore what we're learning through our feelings. We probably need to let go of our ways and following our ways instead of God's ways, because as we heard the prophet say, God say through the prophet, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. How can we pour our energy and attention to God's ways and thoughts? We need to let go of associating evil when it happens because the person that it happened to is worse than me or other than me or different than me or deserved it. We need to let go of uh, thinking when Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it to the full, he only meant after they died, and not a fullness of life here and now too. We need to let go of an obsession with the point of church being a building or to have more people show up. And when we do, we might find the space and the fertilizer and the time and the energy and attention to cultivate new fruit. To join with the response of the gardener and say, hang on a minute, let me tend to it. Let me get some of this other stuff out of the way that I might care for this and cultivate Faith, that there might be room for this tree to grow as more has been pruned away. So as we let go of the need to associate a reason, the reason that people are other or worse sinners than me, and that's why that bad thing happened to them, instead we can cultivate a response that renounces evil and practices love, that steps in and says, God is a God of love, and this is not a loving way to treat your neighbor. As we let go of thinking the entire point is about bringing more people to a specific place, we might indeed cultivate the ability to go take the good news of God in Christ to the people who need to hear it. We might cultivate our ability to live God's love. The process might stink a little bit. But God is growing something new and good in you and in us as a congregation. And so we prune and we let things go. We let them fall down. And we join God and the gardener Intending and fertilizing and cultivating those fruit, those fruit of the Spirit, those fruit of love itself and life to the full.
that are already taking root and growing in you and in us. Amen.